Greetings and welcome back to the Kiss My Aesthetic Podcast. I'm so excited for these ladies to be on the show. Welcome, Annette, and welcome, Sarah. Thank you. Hello. We're excited to be here. Oh, my goodness. I found you guys on Instagram a while back, and I was so obsessed because our team has been starting to work in the hospitality space with short-term rentals, vacation rentals, and building brands. So we're going to get into that today. Uh, But before we do, tell us a little bit of your origin story, how you two met, because the story's on your website, and it's so interesting, and kind of where you're at today, what you guys offer with Thanks for visiting. Yeah, I think your audience will tell, we'll highlight the parts of our background that we think your uh, audience will love. And one is um, before I got into short term rentals, I was working in the apparel industry. And so we did um, vintage inspired collegiate professional sports gear. And so lots of cut and sew and um, design for just kind of bringing back those um, vintage styles that were there. And this was, uh, kind of dating myself. This was like 15 years ago. So it was really fun to be um, e-commerce, you know, direct to consumer. It was a great way to be able to, oh my gosh, have anyone in the world be able to purchase your design. So we were kind of in a really like sweet spot of that direct to consumer being able to print maybe 15, 20, 30 shirts, see if people liked it and then go more um, mass market and do larger print runs. But what I loved about that business was being able to connect with people from all over the world <laughs> and being open 24 seven. And once I left that, we, I came to short term rentals and I was like, I wanted to be still in the, the world of online open 24 seven to the entire world. And I was like, Hmm, where else can I do that? And the sharing economy was very, very interesting to me. And so, you know, the light bulb went off. That is Airbnb. So how can I design a space, welcome guests 24 seven market around the world. And it was like a match made in heaven because then I didn't have to deal with inventory <laughs> headaches, mm-hmm. extra small through double extra mm-hmm. large to uh, just working with all the different vendors. It was like this design an amazing space, have it clean, immaculate, ready for the next guest. And I had a lot more control. So that's how I went from apparel into short term rentals. Love that. I have a very different background. I used to be a Broadway performer in New York City, and I had done that for like 15 years and was feeling jaded. I would go into mm-hmm. audi- auditions and it, instead of being very excited for all the possibilities, I hated everyone around me and the people behind the casting. T- it was like, I was like, this is not who I am. I need to get out. We call that toxic, Sarah. Yes, mm-hmm. It, mm-hmm. it was. It was once I was I was like a very sunny person and then all of a sudden I wasn't. <laughs> so I knew that was time for me to hang on my tap shoes and do something different. And I've always loved interiors. I always loved houses. And my husband and I um, had decided to go on our own and kind of be like a husband-wife DIY home improvement duo. So we DIY'd our home and we also did some construction work for clients in New York, which has a whole other story of, of fun elevator drywall times. But um, we bought a property in New York City somehow uh, with a 3% FHA loan. And at the same time, Airbnb came on the scene. So while I thought I was going to rent out this basement bedroom to my acting friends between gigs, I saw this platform come online and I said, Nick, my husband, I was like, we should try this. Maybe we could be like, we could try this Airbnb platform. And we had a whole bunch of stuff to make it so that our home felt separate, even though it wasn't a duplex. And we both immediately fell in love with how much, yes, how much money it could bring us. But also it was really cool to have in the first year, I think we welcomed people from like 20 different countries to to New York city into our house. And they were actually really lovely. We had zero negative experiences with that. Even though every time they checked in, like, is this going to be where we get X murdered? Like what's going to (laughs) happen? Um, but it never happened. And it was so lovely. And um, we decided that we want to do more of it. But we knew if we did it in New York City, it would take a long time. So we decided, even though I love that city so much, to leave and go to a market where we could buy more property and turn them into short-term rentals. Long story short, ended up in Columbus, Ohio, bought a fourplex right off the rip from our profits from that New York City um, home. And at the same time, we just moved to Columbus. They started talking about regulations and really limiting Mm -hmm. what we could do with our property there. And I was like, no, I just like uprooted myself from the place I would dreamed of living and had my entire life there. I knew not one soul in Columbus, Ohio. So I'm a very Eskinet stubborn and I get angry and I have to channel that anger somewhere. So I, so she went to city council. I did kiss Mm -hmm. my ass. Aesthetic. I'm uh-huh, I'm uh-huh. gonna be able to, and that's where I met Sarah was at yes. that city council meeting. We like to say fight for our right to short term rent to Airbnb our property. 
property. Go. So oh my god. <laughs> yeah, no. So then the rest is history, right? So That's you two it. link up. You're like, let's do this together. Let's let's blend our skills. I love that. And I love that you made a connection just from like being local in your community and talking about something, right? Like yeah. I've just gotten plugged back in in my community here and been going to the Chamber of Commerce meeting and ended up sitting up next to the mayor that I didn't know that he was the mayor. And it's just one of those things where it's like you never know who you're gonna meet. So don't overlook to anyone listening, don't overlook like your local networking possibilities. I think that that's something that gets kind of forgotten in the balance. But okay, so you come together, you're like, let's make thanks for visiting. Um, What was kind of the initial pitch? What was the elevator pitch for what you were going to be providing through this brand? Oh, I love how you thought there was a pitch because <laughs> I mean, and you, know. you, you might hate this as a brand strategist, but truly at the beginning, it was I had never found someone who could talk about laundry or coffee selections or Mm -hmm. our booking calendar. Like my husband like helped, but he didn't, he wasn't like in the operations. So when I met Annette and she was also a fellow hard worker and Mm -hmm. that's also hard to find. And so like we made a coffee date and she actually showed up on time and then we just couldn't stop talking about it. And we would meet again and again. And I even, she, you had, Annette wanted to start a podcast talking about short-term rentals. And she invited me to be a guest on her podcast. And it was such a lovely time that I'm sure I'm fast forwarding a lot, but she just asked me to do the podcast with her, like co-host it with her. We really didn't have a, we didn't have a plan. Um, and I'm very like, not shame. Like I have no shame in saying that. Like we really had it. We just, we were sharing, um, so much together that we were like, there's gotta be other hosts out here. Like I wish there was a Sarah and Annette when I got started to Mm -hmm. listen to. And I was like, you know what, then let's be that. And we had no intentions like of really having a, we didn't have a business plan. We didn't even have, like, Mm -hmm. we were just, it was, you know, our own time, our own money, but we were like, let's try this. Let's try to get our message out. I love the medium of podcasting. And so I was like, well, I love listening to podcasts. So let's start there with something I already enjoyed. I was kind of very selfish in that. Um, This is something I like, like, let let me, instead of just consume, let's create. Um, And that was just like, let's start creating. We were lucky enough that a podcast did land and like we were consistent. So um, being able to be consistent was the biggest thing there. And then finding something that we really enjoyed and we can share too. We tried to do video in the beginning and it was too much. Like we couldn't get all the things coordinated. So we're like, wait, we've just got to like peel it back, Mm -hmm. do one thing consistently, and then we can layer it on. And that's kind of what I anybody that's listening to this, whatever business they're in, it's like, just do one thing for a while, consistent, and then layer on the next. Don't beat yourself up doing all the things at once. For Completely. sure. Completely. Just before this, I was listening to the audiobook 10X is easier than 2X. Mm-hmm. And that's their philosophy too, right? Is like focus on what the core is of the thing that needs to be good and make that the best that it can be. And then you can add on all these extra bits and pieces. And I feel like that theme might be consistent with hosting short-term rentals, right? It's like, mm-hmm. I've got to imagine people come to you guys or they're looking for advice from you and they're saying, okay, I've got this property. I don't know how to get it from A to Z. So what are some of those first questions that you're helping people through? when someone's like, oh, can I pick your brain? Like I need help Mm -hmm. or, you know, I just acquired this spot and I want to make it a rental. Where do you feel like people get the most lost? I I think a a lot of them, um, it is design. And I'm not just saying that because it's like, they, they like, you know, sometimes people, the numbers don't even matter to them because maybe it was a family property that they've been, you know, um, given or it's a lifestyle asset for them. So they're like, look, we're going to have this property no matter what. Like we're going to have this lake house. We want to have this beach house. And if we can make some extra money on the side, great. But I think it's that how do we design it to where um, the it's not just our our enjoyment, but mm-hmm. welcoming strangers, welcoming guests, and also the um, post COVID like times have changed. Like you have got to be an experience, and whether and that experience a lot of times for a lot of hosts. And you know we're in Columbus, Ohio, so we don't have a beach, <laughs> we don't have <laughs> we don't have things that might just be quote unquote touristy. So you have to lure in those guests with your design with your photo. So it's really like, what are micro experiences that you're offering in your overnight stay? Well, and and communicating those experiences, I think is, an, is another challenge of new hosts. So mm-hmm. figuring out what that is and sometimes getting out of their own head and really looking at your market. What are other people offering that you don't need to offer because it's being overdone mm-hmm. in your area? Or mm-hmm. what aren't they offering that you can bring because of your unique proposition, right? And then how can you have that experience start from the beginning? Because mm-hmm. people who are shopping 
you know, whether it's a, a boutique hotel, a motel, a short term rental, you're not going to tour it first in person and then Correct. decide to book it. You have to book it off of what you see online. And so that experience has to start with the first word, the title of it, the first photo you throw at them, what that photo is of. Does that photo, how does that photo sit next to your competitors when you're served up on, you know, Airbnb or Verbo? Do you all look the same? Are you all of you mm-hmm. of that same lake? And so we new hosts have to kind of reposition their brain and kind of have like that marketing hat on that a lot of them don't mm-hmm. have experience in marketing. And that's that's okay. I mean, that's you know why our podcast exists, why our brand exists. So we can sure. kind of introduce to homeowners, to vacation rental owners that um, you really have to think, yes, like the guests, but also make sure that you're offering something that isn't being offered elsewhere and know that the experience starts before they even book with you. If you're going to yes. stand a chance post totally. post COVID. Yeah. Well, and I think it, the consumer behavior has changed. I had on my podcast not too long ago, a good friend of mine, her account is called Girl Gone Abroad. She's got 100,000 followers on Instagram. She's She seeks places out that are unique on purpose. She's like, I don't want to stay where everyone has been staying. I don't want to stay where there's 40,000 photos of it already, but mm-hmm. I'm going to seek something out. But she, there is that kind of like, it has to be unique enough, but also you still got to feel like you can trust it, right? Like it mm. still needs to feel like it's going to be safe and comfortable and nice and interesting, especially some of these places where she goes that are really out in the middle of nowhere, right? Where there's like mm-hmm. not a lot of other options. But it's similar to building a brand, right? Like we have to get to know who's the ideal customer. What do they Mm -hmm. care about? What's going to make them feel excited and feel like they belong, but also challenged? Like they kind of got to be maybe a little bit pushed like, ooh, this could be something different than what I'm used to. And that's that. that? Yeah, well, that's something I think that's key is a lot of times when people are, most of the time when people are traveling, it is aspirational. So they Mm -hmm. are going to go up that one or two levels higher than what Mm -hmm. they would normally in, you know, use on their day-to-day basis. And so you've got to remember that person that's choosing your place, they're, they're going up that next level. And how can you offer that to, to them? And you have to be, like you said, you are a brand and thinking about, um, you know, obviously you want to welcome, you want to be inclusive and welcome anyone and everyone to your space. But you have to have that avatar. You have to have that ideal guest in mind when you are designing, when you're writing your copy for your listing, when you're taking all the photos of your listing. You really need to have that ver- that one person in mind that you are going to offer that five star stay from. Because if you if you get that five star stay, if you get that avatar down, the other people are all going to file in. But you have to really speak to that one consumer. Absolutely. And just an, an example of that is. So right now, Annette and I are, we bought a bunch of land about an hour south of us. Cool. And it's funny because I'm not a camper. I'm not yep. really a glamper. Like I prefer like high rise hotel, <laughs> sure. bougie, bougie bar on the level. But, but in fairness, Annette and I, sometimes we need to get away from like our day to day working in our, in our podcast studio or like we work a lot in Annette's apartment or my house. And so if we need to get away to like, just think outside the box a little bit for our business, we'll go an hour south and stay in one of these cabins. But I, me, the traveler is looking for, I want to make sure I have fast Wi-Fi. I'd like mm-hmm. Be close to, you know, where's your nearest coffee shop? I want those niceties that you'd have in a hotel. So if you're going to speak to me to book your place, uh, you know, whether you're, you know, you're still in the woods. So we're still like Mm -hmm. in a, in a place where there's a lot of trees and like nature. You're going to talk to me a lot different than you're going to talk to someone who doesn't mind pitching a tent, does not want to connect to the Wi Fi, does not want to be around humans. Yep. Right. So while we're talking at the same, you know, five mile radius, maybe we're still talking about cabins. We're still talking about being in nature. How you talk to me versus the other person in pictures and design and aesthetic and copy, like Annette was just saying, is so different. And that's why it's it, it, even in hospitality, just like there's those big brands, um, you know, you've got whether you've got a Hilton or a Holiday Inn Express, which I love myself a Holiday Inn Express. Like I like what they have to offer at that price point. You're going to talk to me differently. You're going to hit me at a different time. And right, like free breakfast is going to get you versus like Four Seasons. Right, right. Like, do their spa amenities are going to be what they're what they're touting. But I think the biggest thing, which I think is exciting for um, potentially a lot of your listeners, is that design matters more than ever mm-hmm. in short term rentals. Like you have got to separate yourself. There has to like long gone are the days of taking the photos yourself of just yep. making one trip to Ikea. And you know, I, this is a quote that I like to say, throwing it up on Airbnb. Like you uh-huh. are not going to be able to get that maximum daily rate, maximum return on your investment. And you know, you are sorely mistaken if you think you can just like, you know, put in like all your hand-me-downs and secondhand stuff and like in, in, in this place and be able to command that top dollar for reservations. And so totally agree. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I think that's encouraging to anybody that has um, any sort of what what we love too is um, we should mention Sarah and I also, when we first started working together, we were like staging properties together mm-hmm. and like setting them up. And th- what we love is there have been so much um, other opportunities in the short-term rental ecosystem. Like you had just told us you're working with clients. Like mm-hmm. there are so many people that need help with the. We, we hired a designer actually um, for some mood boards for a, the one of the cabins that we're redoing. So if you're a designer, if you're a photographer, if you are, you know, great at social media, like these real estate investors, these short-term rental investors need partners like that. And I think that's what's exciting too, is there's this whole uh, ecosystem and other people that are helping short-term rental hosts up their game with their skill sets. Well, there's this beautiful, there's this beautiful segment of the audience, and this is who we've worked with, which are their Airbnb hosts, but they aren't quite boutique hotels, but they're somewhere in the middle, right? It's not that I want you to stay in my house because I'm going on vacation and somebody else can stay here, but they're running it as a business. They're treating it as a business, but they want to cater to their audience in that like old school mom and pop bread and bed and breakfast way. So a lot of the conversations that we have about branding for short-term rentals is like, again, creating experience, world building. So the two examples, we did Peach Grove House, which was in upstate New York that was on a historic Peach Grove. It was like an 1850s house, eight bedroom, like gorgeous, right? So it's a lot about telling the history of the town and the story. And then Hemsley Ranch, which is in Idaho, which was a, um, the main house was like 10 bedrooms. And then there was a guest house and they were going to build an event venue and a whole thing. And, and it was about kind of telling this like rancher cowboy story. They were going to move there. They also had like a cheese making business that they were going to move on property. That was part of the experience. And then all the way to Italy, the Italy project we worked on, you guys will love this story is I had my 30th birthday last year in Italy with my girlfriends and um, nine of us went out to Italy together and and I just started messaging with the host on Instagram, like, hey, can I tag your property? Like, we've taken so many photos. I'm a marketer. I have so much content. I was like, can we tag your Instagram? And they just had one Instagram account for the whole property management company. And I was like, man, this house is so cool. It like needs its own moment. And then six months later, they came to us and like got our help with branding. So it's like <laughs> ended up being full circle. Ooh, but it's such that. an opportunity, I think, to make these really unique, really special, really rare type of experiences which I think especially millennials crave because a Four Seasons is a Four Seasons of Four Seasons. A Ritz-Carlton is a Ritz-Carlton is a Ritz. You know what I mean? Like that definitely has its appeal for a certain type of traveler. But I think there's such a great juicy space to like be in a spot that feels like you're actually living there. Like mm-hmm. feels curated, feels well thought out, feels intentional, like down to like the embroidered towels and the welcome kit and the signage. And there's so many like little micro moments for branding to make that visitor feel taken care of. And that's why I love hospitality. Mm-hmm. What are kind of some of the moments or some of your favorite experiences from traveling that really stood out as like, oh my gosh, like, yes, they get it. Like they understand this. I used to work in hotels and restaurants in New York. And I have one hotel manager who still is like near and dear to my heart because he taught me a lot about hospitality. And one of the things he taught me was um, if someone goes to reach for it, it should be there no matter where they're at in the hotel. Okay. So if they're at the bar and restaurant, you give them their, their beer, like there should be a coaster waiting for them Um, before their beer is empty. Like you should be approaching them and asking them if they like another. And of course, when you're drinking beer, you know, you get, you get hungry. So, so it's same with short-term rentals. Like if you're going to go lay down in your bed at night, like you're probably gonna go plug in your phone. So there should be a charger there for both Android and iPhone. Or when you speak to me, if we're talking about the story about the ranch, you know, hand with the, with the, mm-hmm. the cheese and all that, like the, the tone, the language, the words that you use and you speak to me, I want to be in that story the entire time. Mm-hmm. So, so again, because because I expect to be engrossed in that world. So I think my favorite experience is when that experience starts before we even arrive. And every time I go to do something, it's like, oh, the host already sp- has already thought about it. Or what I thought I wanted, I was so wrong. Like I wanted what the host, because the host knows yeah. better than me in this experience of what of what I want in this situation. So one tiny example, and this is a very, and, and I still talk about it to this day. She drug me to a podcast meetup in Pittsburgh <laughs> when I first met her. And I was like, oh my God, this woman loves a networking opportunity. Well, anyway, we drove there and we were going to Pittsburgh and we decided to stay in someone's tiny home in their backyard. And for the experience, for the experience, of which that was experience in itself. They had chickens outside. It was a whole thing. It was, we were in their backyard. We were in Straight their up. backyard. <laughs> but we arrived late and there's nothing open in his in his neighborhood. Um, and there was a bag of popcorn. And like, 
the fact microwave that, popcorn. We like they're in all of our properties now. All of our properties that. because that bag was like like life's <laughs> nectar. You know what I mean? To like being totally. able to like survive that night. So it's little thing. Like how much is a bag of popcorn? Like not a lot of money, right? And it's not even about like a whole big brand like thing. It's just like sure. what a lovely thing to have in your cupboard when you know your guests could be arriving late and they're hungry. Totally. And two things I can say, and this is um, I just love anywhere I stay and there is anything that calls me by my name, whether it's my first name or my last name, a like just an ounce of personalization Mm -hmm. just crushes for me. Mm -hmm. Like someone took one extra step Step. to either write my name on something, call me by my name, text me by my, like just having my name, that personalization, you got me. Like it it just goes Mm -hmm. to show that they went that, that next step. And then one other thing, well, actually we'll have you help us brand this. I'm giving you, um, (laughs) commissioning you for a job right now. Um, Sarah actually turned me on to this. Uh, it's our famous, like forgot something basket. Mm -hmm. And we love this because back to Sarah's experience, like if they, you know, if they reach for it, it should be there. And unfortunately, sometimes with short-term rentals, they go to reach for something and they forgot it because it's not a lot, like not always something we provide. And if you're at a hotel, what do you do? You call down to the front desk. Hey, I forgot my toothbrush. Hey, I forgot my razor. I need, you know, deodorant. Well, that doesn't happen. There's no front desk um, at a short-term rental. So this forgot something basket is an inexpensive way to supply all of that. And what we see is, again, a lot of our guests don't even use it, but they see that we thought ahead. If they had forgotten it, they're like, oh, that would have been awesome. Like they've got that. They've got my back if if I forgot it. So it's just sometimes it's also the areas and the things in your home that people don't use that they still recognize that you made available to them as guests. And these are the things that people, I would imagine, leave in their reviews, right? Like that they say they notice these things and they say, I... uh, I mean, reading through a guest book at a recent Airbnb that I stayed in in Cal Poly Slow and their guest book at this Airbnb, I went with a bunch of my friends, like goes all the way back to 2009 and just reading through all the pages and seeing like, oh, we're here for our family reunion or I came on my bachelorette party, like was so fun because it just felt like you felt linked to that mm-hmm. experience, you know, and it, it did feel memorable. But the this is all kind of what we've talked about so far, I feel like it's part of the stay and part of after the stay of like how to, ke- to keep them and, and hopefully keep them coming back and keep them referring. What if you're just getting started and you're trying to do like the first effort of marketing? We talked about having good photography. We talked about having like good key terms, good copywriting. I love that you guys recorded an episode about ChatGPT because like I'm a super fan of ChatGPT. But what are some of those um, effective marketing strategies that you really recommend for someone who's like, okay, I want to start to take this seriously? We have found that a lot of hosts, and this is this is going to be controversial and this sure. will be, you're going to have to slough through like the nonsense. But if you can link arms with influencers Mm -hmm. that can get to the heart of that avatar, your, you know, your guest that you want to stay. If there's some, if you can find alignment there, that can be the gift that keeps on giving. Mm -hmm. Um, So if you can allow someone, like you said, um, with your birthday trip Mm -hmm. and those wonderful photos that you took, if you can, if, if you can find influencers that can speak the language of your property and speak the language of your guest, that is well worth the investment. And sometimes the investment, you know, this is where it gets very controversial. Yeah, it, can maybe be, it. Yeah. it can maybe be a stay. It could maybe, it, you know, content creators, it's kind of the wild, wild west still of like, what a, what's the rate? Or, or is it just the free stay? Is it a free stay on top of payment? You know, there could be a lot of different things there. But I think um, looking at their history, looking at their followers, talking to if they've done some of these um, commissions before, referrals. Mm-hmm. Like if you crushed it, give them like, give them your referrals. But I, d- I definitely think that is marketing that can, you know, you can keep using that over and over again. One other idea for new hosts would be one of our community members did this in uh, Queens where she lived. She partnered up with a local media company. Oh, cool. So yeah. they have like an online newsletter. And they were quite popular for that community, that that neighborhood. And so she did a giveaway with them in partnership with them. Media nice. companies like that always want content. I mean, I'm, you know what I mean? One of podcast course, is the course. next. You <laughs> yeah. want like great content. And so when someone comes to you with a really cool content idea, so she partnered with them and did a giveaway um, and they, they leveraged their Instagram accounts. So yes, they're an online media newsletter, but they, of course they have a social media account and they, and she got great results from that. She was also very smart and though she partnered with this media out and she paid them to be, to do the giveaway. Sure. I think it was like a couple hundred bucks, but I mean, she made it so that she can get email addresses of people who were local mm-hmm. to her 
to where she's at and it's her avatar lived there because they would go and travel like an hour, you know, away to get away from the city. Um, but she does it year after year because of its success. And it's easy. It's an easy way to get directly to that booker, which is really hard to do these days, right? You can't do sure. these sorts of things with Airbnb or with Verbo or with Booking.com. Yeah, let's, com. let's talk about that because you used to, and maybe I'm wrong, but I feel like you used to be able to contact someone and ask questions about an Airbnb, like exchange email addresses, whatever, through Airbnb before you've booked. But now that's more complicated. You can't, you cannot like as a host, we are ah. forbidden from giving, giving you our contact information outside of the platform. They want you to book onto that platform because that host fee that they connect, that they collect obviously is, is what makes their shareholders happy. So mm-hmm. yeah, but a there hot, are some yeah, hot tip there is you can, if there's something that you like on the Airbnb platform, a lot of times if you read their description, They'll Their say host like, profile. Find me on Instagram up. here, uh-huh. or if it has a name, if the property has a name, you can look that up on social media, or you know, just going online and social media. And now the search in any sort of social media is amazing. So if you have an area that you want to go to, typing it in with Airbnb or short term rental, you know, I uh, you can get directly to to that host most likely. So I gotta imagine that you recommend people name their properties. Yeah. Yes. We recommend they name their properties. We recommend in their host bio, that's where they list, you know, the name of their hosting company, right? Or if they have one property, the name of their property. Um, We don't recommend it for like the title on Airbnb, like they, because that might not mean something to like, you know, I don't know, scenic hideaway lookout. You know what I mean? Like in the, in the world of um, algorithms, that's not going to help you, but in your host profile or above the fold, like that section mm-hmm. of text that describes a property, you could say, welcome to mm-hmm. the name of your property. So that if someone wants to go and and Google that, that could give yeah. them, you know, the, the juice they're looking I for. I think that, that, that makes a lot for. of sense, right? Because then you can also diversify beyond just one platform. As we know with social media, like you can get really uh, bogged down by having all of your stuff on one thing. So I always recommend to our clients, like, listen, you, you're going to want to diversify your platforms from a marketing perspective anyway. Also, because you'll get different audiences on different places. Your Facebook mm-hmm. audience will be different than your TikTok audience, different than your Instagram audience, et cetera, email, all those things. Um, but I, I mean, as the branding person here, like <laughs> I love the idea of calling it a place. And I think I kind of get this from my parents. My mom's an interior designer and she sold two of our houses growing up through Instagram. Like, yeah. Instagram on Instagram and saying like, anyone want to buy this? It's like fully designed by me, ready to go. <laughs> and uh, turned really turnkey. You know what I mean? Like made for a nice experience. But I think that if I'm the person putting yourself in the mindset of someone who wants to go on a cool trip somewhere you've never been, is like, I'm going to do my research slowly over time. Like I want to follow some cool places. I want to follow, like you said, some influencers and, and how wonderful it would be to be able to follow a property you're interested in staying in. Like, that's so cool. But then you want to be able to see like, okay, what does it look like? What's the the restaurants nearby? What are the amenities? Like, how are people enjoying the space? Because you can start to visualize yourself in it once you've seen it. Yeah. hundred percent. Yes. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Love all of that. And I love the idea of partnering with a giveaway, partnering with an influencer makes so much sense. Where do you feel like the future of short-term rentals is going? Like, what has you excited in your industry? And what are some things that you're like, I really think by this time next year, we're going to be talking about blank. What has me excited is there was a there was a height to short term rentals right when, right when COVID hit where like you it, we didn't feel safe going to hotels so we went to drivable destinations and then it felt like everyone and their mother bought a short term rental and was offering a place to stay and now people are kind of seeing how much work it is <laughs> to yes. run short term rental and so we're starting to see a leveling out of of hosts who are kind of maybe didn't know how much work it was and they're getting out of it. And so for for those of us who are in this for, you know, for the long haul and put the work into it for those experiences, I think we're going to start to see, not necessarily like it's not going to get any easier because it's a very tough industry to be in. But listen, like the industry is is our lifeblood. And so when you have bad apples who are in it just for the money, um, that's really frustrating to see in your community. But we're starting to see a lot of these, you know, rentals go on the market, getting sold off. A lot of people are selling their Airbnb furniture. And Mm -hmm. me, like I'm excited for it to kind of come back to the hospitality um, gurus who are kind of obsessed with experiences. And then the whole whole talk about experiences, I mean, Airbnb right now is doubling down on it because it is so important to today's traveler to have an experience. 
um, they're, they're just like Annette said, like the status quo is no longer going to be, is not going to cut it. And I'm excited for that. I like leveling up my game. I like the challenge as a traveler. I'm mm-hmm. excited for there to be less, you know, stuff to wade through to find the good stuff. So yeah, more experiences, better short-term rentals. Uh, I'm looking forward to that. I'm just looking for it. It, it. it happened during COVID. It's continuing to happen. It's like everything, lifestyles are just shifting where we're, you, can work from, you can work from anywhere. I don't think people are focusing as much on like retiring in just one location for 20 years after they retire. They're going to have these opportunities to live in three different places a year or four different mm-hmm. places a year. So I think the opportunity for everyone worldwide to just experience different places, and I think that's just going to become more and more the norm. So I'm, mm-hmm. I'm really excited about that. And it might not even be, I don't, in short term rentals might even morph into something, you know, midterm rentals are kind of a buzzword now too, but yeah. they, they're just going to be more fluid of, you know, booking something for 30 days is, is going to be part of the norm and maybe not at the price point. So I think like Sarah said, there's going to be this leveling out of right. the pricing and the way people use, use the spaces. Right. Right. I mean, well, now you're speaking my language because from 2017 to 2019, I was a digital nomad. So I had no apartment, no car, no dog, no responsibilities to myself and my work. And that was it. And I was 23, 24 when I was started traveling. So it's like 20, well, 24 to 26. And I used to go with this group called Wi-Fi Tribe. And they were basically your like abroad, like RA kind of like college mm-hmm. vibes. Yeah. So they would like put together entrepreneurship houses. And so yeah, you live with so a bunch cool. of people that worked online, but they were just booking stuff through Airbnb too. You know what I mean? So right. they, it's just like, it's so interesting as a business that Airbnb built this software that's just allowed for more entrepreneurship, which is like, is that what the next iteration of Airbnb, like the next chapter of Airbnb is? It's like, there is that big gap between like the hobbyists and the professional. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And more like that agency model is what I'm curious about. But it was so lovely because like they did all of the sourcing and like we're putting together houses of like 10 and 15 people in Costa Rica and South Africa and um, Croatia and Lisbon and all these places that I got to go with them, which was really cool. But I think there is kind of like, I was always concerned about Wi-Fi. I was always concerned. I run a podcast. Like I, the Wi-Fi I, tribe had Wi-Fi concerns. <laughs> you know what? They were pretty good about bringing their hotspots. Like, like they had so much tech and this was 2017. This is like before right. remote was like even really a topic of conversation, but they had mm-hmm. all their routers and their modems and their everything. And like, they were pretty adamant about like, this is the thing that we will try to do their best. So at. we're going to ask you, where was uh-huh. the favorite? What was your favorite Airbnb that you stayed in? during the oh my gosh. five years. And what, what was the difference maker there? You know, I think the thing is, is like the trips, it's so interesting because there's so much about the people. Like I have my favorite people from certain trips, but then I have my favorite places. And my favorite Airbnb we stayed in was Costa Rica because it had this infinity pool out to a jungle. And that mm. was crazy. And then this, I was with a bunch of like travel blogger people who like had a bunch of drones and stuff. And so there's like a video of me like running out of the house and like cannonballing into the pool. And then it like zooms out and you're like full jungle in Costa Rica. And that was freaking cool. But even then, like the furniture in this place in Costa Rica was like, it was bare bones. It was just like tile, Ikea sofa. That's it. Like mm-hmm. bed, the no decor, no nothing. Like it was, uh, it was thrifty to say the least. I'm way more choosy now about like where I like to stay. Um, but I definitely had some crazy hospitality experiences traveling with my sister. So she's a destination wedding planner. And so we go all around the world. I just got back from three trips last month with her from Italy to to Mexico and then to Napa. And I'm telling you, there are places that we think of so fondly because like they thought of every detail. Like they took the sparkling, like the Pellegrino water bottles and like rewrapped them with their logos. Mm, and I was like, mm-hmm. stop. Like they had like the <laughs> bottle opener and the little things and like everything was thought of and it was so like well curated and well put together. And that's the energy that we're trying to bring to our brand design clients. Of course, it's like, how do you elevate that experience so that every touch point feels mm. special and it feels connected to the place you're giving that sense of place? Um, but yeah, I, I'm curious to see like to your midterm rental question is I've noticed with my mom's business, like for some of her clients, they're building full content studios at home. Mm-hmm. So it's not just that you have your home office, like you have your content studio. So I'm curious if midterm rentals or even short-term rentals would rent, like I've got a team, we all work remote. I'd love nothing more than to take them to like a content house retreat. Mm-hmm. 
Mm -hmm. right? To like elevate that, bring it to that level. Yeah. That's actually something we're, we're looking at right now of how to bring entrepreneurs. Uh, because as Sarah shared earlier, we do retreats Mm -hmm. and it's always missing this entrepreneurial content creator aspect that we need, whether it be Wi-Fi or just big screens or speakers and microphones, um, and, and lighting. So yes, I think that is, um, and that's why, um, Peer space. I think there yes, are certain cities space. with peer space that is they're crushing it because people are looking for that. So that's what's cool too. If you have a space like that, you can be on Airbnb and you can be on peer space and kind of get both the mm-hmm. uh, best of both worlds there. But for sure, I think the content houses for people to do that are, are definitely going to be on the rise. Or even like if your contenting is just capturing the mem- memories with your family totally. at the property. It, totally. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, it's it started small. I mean, I think it's still a thing where like you have your like Instagram wall yeah. in, in our in our world, like right there, like what's one wall? You can like make Instagrammable. Some people take selfies. You know what I mean? Right. So for us people, that's like maybe it's like wallpaper or it's like one of those neon signs. Sure. Now we just have to like 10X that right? Mm-hmm. Like we have to have some really cool things where people can document their stay, whether it's a metro stay or or more of a vacation rental destination. I don't care who you are. You're having fun on TikTok or Instagram or Pinterest mm-hmm. or whatever. And the more that you as a host can accommodate that, I think that's really cool and unique. That's not a conversation that we've had a lot in our circles. So that's a really cool point sure. that you bring up. Well, we'll have to see a year from now where we're at and if we're right with our predictions, right? Yeah. <laughs> in the meantime, if people want to follow you, find you online, listen to your podcast, where can they do so? Plug yourself and uh, let them know what they can take advantage of. We really appreciate that. So um, I'll let Annette share with you something you can take advantage of if you're interested in hosting. But truly, our whole world is at thanksforvisiting.com. And you can hang out with us there. You can learn with us there. You can check out our podcast there. We have a YouTube channel. I mean, we content, speaking of contenting, we content 24 <laughs> seven. So that's where we're at. Yeah. And if you're interested in hosting, we have a video series. It's all about getting from acquiring the property to hosting that first guest and hopefully hundreds of guests. And you can find that at thanksforvisiting.com slash handbook. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much. I'm sure we will be in touch, ladies. And yes. uh, you know, if you ever need help with branding, you know where to find me. So I know. We're gonna, you're going to help us with the basket. Get it, I love get that it idea. dialed in. <laughs> I love that idea. Well, thanks yeah. everyone for listening. If you liked today's episode, please don't forget to share, tag both of us. We would love it. And all the notes from today will be in the show notes. And we'll catch you next time. See ya. Bye. Thank you.